Welcome to Mail Rail. You're about to explore some of London's hidden underground postal railway. I'm Andy, your guide today, and I'm joined by Ray Middlesworth. Hi, Ray. Hi. I worked here as an engineer for 27 years, moving the train. But not just any old trains. This unique narrow gauge road was designed to carry mail, not people. So if you're feeling a little cramped, that's why. Although we have a driver today, the original mail trains were drivers. It was a huge network of automated electric trains running right under central London, carrying mail between main railway stations and sorting offices much faster than along the congested streets above our heads. And it's amazing to think construction of the railway began as far back as 1914, with the tunnels dug by hand. Work was put on hold during the First World War. But when the railway finally opened in 1927, it cut the journey time across London from a few hours to just 30 minutes. It was an engineering marvel. Our railway must not stop right today for another 75 years until it's a hospital train. As we explore, we'll be going back in time to see the tunnels, loading platforms, and a few surprises. We'll be at our first stop in a few minutes. take a trip down memory lane through the many decades of mail rail. We're under Mount Pleasant sorting office, heading east to Whitechapel. It was hard work down here, but we all thought we were part of something important. There was enormous team spirit. We seemed to get ourselves in the news a lot in the 90s. It didn't hurt that Bruce Willis made a film down here called Hudson Hawk. In the 80s, we had our 60th anniversary. Along with that, we had a new brand and finally some new trains. I'll tell you two things that sum up the 70s. Postcodes made life a lot easier and strikes made life not so easy. The swinging 60s. Those World Cup stamps sold out after England won. There were a few celebrations down here that summer. In the 50s, air travel became much more common, and so did air mail, and that meant even more of it travelled along mail rail.
the railway was bombed several times. This station suffered the most damage when it was hit in 1943. Amazingly, the railway was back up and running the very next day. That reflected how vital the railway had become. left leads to Liverpool Street Station, where mail was transferred to the main railway network. Further down that tunnel, it looks like a maintenance crew is checking the flood barriers. This side's good. What's that like? Big heavy steel doors that close it off. During the railway's construction, ten men scrambled to safety when the nearby river fleet broke into where they were digging. The barriers here were installed later, after the war, but they never had to be used. Uh, Ray, there's something else here that people might be interested in. Can you tell us about that? When we move off just up ahead, look down towards the track. You might catch a glimpse of the train graveyard where disused trains are stored. I must have worked on all of them at some time. Right? Don't worry, everybody. Just a power cut. Ray, can you explain? Power cuts happen from time to time when the railway was operational. We could draw power from the next station along to keep everything running. And of course, us guys in the engineering teams always kept the trains and track in good order. OK, on we go. letters. This is the Colonel. He's writing to the famous poet W.H. Auden at the GPO film unit. This is Kathleen. She's keeping in touch with her sweetheart in the Navy. 
And this is Mary. Her letter is very special because it's going to a princess. <laughs> Darling birds, that neighbor is keeping you away from me for far too long. And everyone says a war's coming. I'll do what they're wrong. Dear Mr. Porter, I think of the to express my admiration for your work on the recent film about the night mail postal train. exhibition just as much. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Okay. 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 Okay.